A very good morning to all the debaters. I, Aryan Manna of Don Bosco School, Lilwa, heartily welcome you all to the online inter-school debate competition. We are grateful to the, all the participants for their active participation in today's event. This group of young and enthusiastic participants are sure to make a mark with the scintillating performance today. Subject to intense competition, the way you all respond under pressure will determine your skills. The grit, the commitment, the teamwork, the spontaneity, and the ability to work under pressure when subjected to intense competition of each of the participants from across the country is sure to add a different dimension in today's event. I feel extremely proud to introduce the two judges for today's event, Ma'am Sreyoshi Ghosh and Sir Shubhayu Mojumdar. Ma'am Sreyoshi Ghosh is currently working at the Department of Higher Education, Government of West Bengal, and is posted at Jhargram Raj College, Girls Wing. Sir Shubhayu Majumdar has worked with nearly all the English newspapers in the city, having lent his services to the Telegraph and the Hindustan Times. He is currently working with the Times of India, where he edits the front page. Thank you, judges, for being with us today at the inter-school debate competition organized by Don Bosco School, Lilwa. We wholeheartedly welcome you both and hope that you will have a great time judging the event. Before the commencement of the event, I would like to remind the participants about the rules and regulations of the event. <laughs> Each debater will, be get, will get a total of five minutes to put forward their arguments. At the end of four minutes, the participants will be given a reminder to wrap off their speech within the next minute. Cameras of all the participants should be kept turned on throughout the event. Switching off the camera will lead to the participant being penalized. Use of any unfair means will lead to deduction of marks. Participants should be in the school uniform during the event. No deviation from the format of the debate will be permitted. We have 14 young debaters from various schools from across we have 14 young debaters from various schools from across the country participating in today's debate competition, namely Om Mohata from MCKV, Pradim Nahata from La Martinia for Boys, Risha Mitra from South City International School, Noyonika Ghos from Shushila Billa Girls School, Shreya Haldar from Auxilium Convent School, Bandal, Shonak Saha from Don Bosco School, Bandal, Devanshi Banerjee from Tribeni Tissues Vidyapeet, Harshita Upadhyay from Sri Sri Academy School, Sharana Chattopadhyay from Vivekananda Mission School, Joka, Anindita Nair from Sophia High School, Nikhil Bhatia from Hirandani School, Shivan Srivastava from Don Bosco Park Circus, and Dhruv Jhinunwala from Don Bosco School, Dilwa. Now it's time to start the debate and set the floor in action. Let's get ready to the witness these energetic minds locking horns with one another to clinch the title. Good luck to all the participants. Before starting the event, I would just like to give the topic for today. The topic is professional journalism is dying in India today. I repeat, the topic is, is professional journalism dying in India today? The person, the person who, who is going to initiate the debate and set the premise in support of the motion is Om Mohata from MCKV. May I start? Yes, you can start. Good morning to one and all present out here. I am Umma Hatha of MCK Srival Vidya Pit. And today I shall be speaking for the motion. Is professional journalism dying in India today? Media, the fourth pillar of democracy. How do common people get to know about what is happening in the world? 
how do we get updated on the things going on around us right through our tv screens mobile phones newspapers and basically media media is to aware us about various social political and economic activities media is like a mirror to the world which reflects the true and harsh realities of the world but what is the actual scenario india's media universe has changed news channels has descended from journalism to pulverizing propaganda that pushes political views and bullies contradictory opinion now news has been reduced to opinions and wishes of political parties instead of being a source of reliable information of the people news has actually turned to be a biased piece of opinion with the facts twisted and rather than being unbiased influenced by politics money and status let me put forward the journalist code of ethics which includes the principles of truthfulness fairness and public accountability these apply to the acquisition of news worthy information and its subsequent dissemination to the public is this even followed no 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 they probably never got to know about this anchors don't lose a second sleep over holding a media trial to send an innocent girl to jail when the court proved them wrong screen warders didn't drop back even a word one conclusive anchor flung mud at the violated dalit girl from hatras by promoting the nefarious narrative of an insensitive state any respect worthy media channel would have questioned how a forensic report collected from the girl 11 days after the incident is expected to show signs of seven none did they did sting operations on behalf of bahubalis now most politicians of pa parties across the country either own or back tv news channels by proxy profit not money but influence the journalists turned into a hired gun of politicians and lost legitimacy the journalists who actually have the arms to tell people the truth are even at a greater risk of being jailed and actually being killed three journalists have allegedly been killed for reporting on corruption in the indian states of bihar and madhya pradesh their deaths underline dangers faced by the journalists in the country indian journalist sandeep sharma was crushed by a truck while riding a scooter in the bhind district in the central state of maharashtra the same day in the bhojipur district in the eastern bihar state journalist navin nishal and his colleague vijay singh were the victims of a deadly hit and run sharma a 35 year old stinger for the news world channel had received threats earlier about conduct, conducting an investigative report in july last year that covered uncovered corruption in the sand mining industry in the past decade at least 324 journalists have been silenced through murder and in the 85% of these cases no perpetrators have been convicted it is an emboldening message to those who seek to censor and control the media through violence india ranked 14 on the global impunity index with 18 murders of journalists with impunity from 2008 to 2018 to one fired the suja there are thousands of bad journalists who seem to more influence over the public and manipulate their opinion we need to understand media is for the public for their betterment not to disguise or mislead the public into believing facts which are actually twisted on on political issues and political pressure nowadays media seems obsessed with bollywood the breaking news nowadays is basically why a dipika padukone has got into the car we are focusing more screen time and space on on the issues of aryan khan being arrested on drug case then the lakhnirpur kheri case where four farmers were allegedly run by an suv suv by a by a son of the bjp leader these issues aren't of much importance to these journals why because people are getting killed no because they have more interest in bollywood more interest on what aryan khan and other actors or actresses are doing 
this is basically what happens when you are getting influenced by the public uh, uh, by the political pressure and instead of being unbiased and right to the people you start misleading the people i would also like to speak that media is something which which makes us aware media is something which makes us aware about the world and not make us confused and mislead and give mis misinformation to us thank you thank you the person who is going to initiate the debate and set the premise in defending the motion is nikhil bhatia from hfs Uh, good morning everyone i am nikhil bhatia and today i will be go i'm going to be going against the motion is professional journalism dying in india today and i have three constructs to my claim but before i begin i would like to highlight a very critical difference between professional and citizen journalism professional journalism refers to journalism that is ethically done and governed by media law whereas citizen journalism has an has some more extra complexities professional journalism adhere to strict ethical and professional standards from the beginning of their education professional journalists are educated about ethics and standards and this gives them a better understanding of what they can and cannot do while reporting on the news journalists are governed by ethics and standards to ensure that they that what they report is actually factual and not biased professional journalism unlike citizen journalism has editors who are regulated by editorial policies that guide and hold them accountable for selecting the appropriate facts to be published or aired now my first argument to support my claim is that without a code of conduct citizen journalists enjoy unlimited publishing power of any news without it being censored or quoted or even if it's offensive this kind of uncensored information can be dangerous when shared on social media platforms and blogs it can foster hate and discrimination among members of the community and a professional journalist journalist isn't concerned about being forced and rushing to publish a story that could lead to any form of hatred because they are abided by a certain set of laws being the first to publish news is all good and well until audiences learn that some information is actually unreliable sometimes fame in the name of being the first is not all this what is it is ek bar so phone ko what out to be and it's important that the report is actually accurate the citizens would most definitely prefer reading an accurate report a bit later that is uh, than just uncensored facts that are being churned out by the minute a form of journalism as regulated as this can surely not be dying in a country like ours the second construct i have to my claim is that today the press council of india is the only formal body that exclusively deals with maintaining and improving the standard and freedom of press in the country it's a civil judicial body that acts as a press watchdog it arbitrates and alle uh, allegations against and by the press on the grounds of infringement or ethics and infringement of press freedom the position of the council is currently regulated by the 1978 act of press council and the norms of journalistic conduct which is a 111 page document containing all the various scenarios that the press might or will face in their work and contains all laws of ethics for these problems all of these um, just ensure that the final report reaching the citizens of our country would just be the most accurate version that can be every citizen would surely appreciate reading a report of any event that is actually you know, written by abiding to certain ethical laws if the difference between the two is understood correctly then professional journalism would be thriving today in 2021 india's press freedom ranked 142 out of 180 countries in the press freedom index an annual index of ranking reporters without borders countries an international non government organization dedicated to safeguarding the right to freedom of information and this was citizen journalism if professional journalism would be put on this chart i'm pretty sure the chart, the numbers would be pretty high one of the members from the opposition said and i quote journalism that uh, today journalism is that what ushers ushers news and propaganda and is influenced by biased views and i would just like to say that no the norms of journalistic conduct that are mandatory to be followed by professional journalism prevent all of this from happening citizen journalism may be allowed to do this but publications are required to abide by these laws if they practice professional journalism 
My third and final construct for my teammates continue and elaborate on everything I have stated so far. Is it a journalist writes whatever he observes in the society? He or she observes in the society. He or she publishes whatever is consumed in the society by the citizens who might be made up of different races and sects and categories and characteristics. Therefore, a journalist should be very cautious and aware of his duties in advertising it to the present sensible society when writing the book. This is exactly how professional journalism works. Not a code of ethics that need to be abided by only means by, uh, by the only means that report will not be reliable and true would also be free of the fierce competition that uh, for views that already exist in the market. How can this form of journalism be dying in a country where journalism is called the fourth pillar of the world's largest democracy? Thank you. Thank you. Now we have the second person from the other team speaking in support of the motion is Shivans Srivastava. Uh, okay, uh, I guess I was third. If you just look, I'm, I'm, I'm the fourth one. I am second one, Devangshi Banerjee from Tribuni Tissues Vidya P. Okay, so you can start with it. Okay. So a very good morning to one and all of you present here. I'm Devangshi Banerjee from Tribuni Tissues Vidya Peet, going to speak for the motion that journalism, professional journalism is dying in India today. Now, journalism is a noble profession and, and is not a mere job. Journals and journalists are the voices of the common people. They are the strength of the have-nots and the deprived people. It is the journalists who bring up the various issues to the government, pointing out to them their faults and inabilities. Now, if you remember during the independence and freedom struggle, these journals and journalists played a vital role. During Indigo revolt, Harish Chandra Mukherjee started Hindu Patriot. Shishir Kumar Ghosh, who was a field journalist, started Amrit Bajar Patrika. Now, the efforts of all these men gave birth to journalism. But what is happening now? True professional journalism is actually expected to have been like this even today in India. But now it seems that professional journalism is dying. It is no longer a voice of the common people aiming to bring on social revolution, but some cases may lead to riots. Now, professional journalism, it was a job of philanthropy for the past years. In history, we have seen that it was not just a business enterprise. They helped in arousing, training, consolidating national public opinion. But now, what is happening? The news, the total structure of the journalism in India has completely changed. The news that are focused now are paid news. They are distorted, fake news that diverge people, emotionally blackmailing them sometimes. Media is now an industry, a corporate house that no longer undertake hardship to collect news, but to make and fake news. So whenever this comes on uh, making and faking news, they're sure about the competition between the various channels. Also, all of us see that various channels, they compete to redesign the real news. And in doing so, they actually increases disconnection with the mass people. So we have often seen that the journals, they forecast about celebrities, about what they are doing, how they are spending them, their lives. But a rural, uh, how the rural people are struggling. Do most of us come to know about that? They are not interested in the news because they mainly focus on making crispy news that will attract the people. But how a rural boy struggles to get up from the base level to a top level is never forecasted. The journals, journalists now aim at making delicious news by collecting news about celebrities, as I already told, and forecasting them to people. In doing so, they subside the true and the real news. Whenever we open the newspaper, the first page we see that they have now become the important news have now become constricted. The 
journals provide uh, promote various kind of business advertisements and the important news are just left aside also they promote sensational news and they rely on hearsay and unverified news so as i mentioned just in the history what was there that the journalists struggle to collect news but what it is now they just hear from others and make that news redesign that news so that they do not go against the government in that way they safeguard their own interests the their advertisement their jobs by not going against the government and the ruling party in doing so they don't understand they also spread negative news from the point the real aim of journals journalists press was but as i already told what happened in the history but now there is a paradigm shift and is and what is the real structure of journalism now is shockingly insensitive to the real concerns of the flesh and blood people we hardly get to know what is happening in true but we are always means the what the journals the journalists and the media shows us most of the time they are fake and they engage the people with those news as that the real news the hidden news never come out the journalists the journalism in india what is happening now they are no longer reliable and credible in india finally i would like to end with saying that what matters is not the truth not the truth but the feel good factor the daily dose of steroids the indian elite so desperately needs gets to the media so this is what the true structure of journalism in now and the journalism that once took birth with the hand in the hands of the fam famous people like harish chandra mukherjee are now slowly dying away with the fake news with the unreliable news thank you very much thank you next up we have the second person from the other team defeating the motion oh thank you so much everyone So to begin with, I am Shubh Chandrawala of Benbosto School, Lilwa, who is going to debate today against this motion. Is professional journalism dying in India today? No, and a firm no. Journalism it was born in India with the sole purpose of reuniting India against the British Raj. Journalism was born in India, was brought to India by our activists, by our freedom fighters. So that we can unite against the oppressive rule of British Raj to inform people of what happens today, tomorrow, every moment to make sure the news is reached to every place in such a country. Journalism can never die, as many of my friends have stated before. Journalism is the fourth pillar of democracy, the fourth pillar of the democracy of India, the largest democracy in the world. There can be no democracy without journalism because. freedom of press is not just important to democracy it is the democracy journalism forms a basis for the democracy how many people today have come here and told how journalism today is dying but they forget that they forget the people who are trying to keep it revive to keep it safe these are hard times for the true journalism the professional journalism in india but as pointed out freelancers and citizenship journalism is what is correcting it today through the media people become aware of events and occurrences around them they make educated decisions only on the basis of these news it contributes in creating sympathy and awareness among people sometimes it also helps raising fund it also helps people in difficult times such as covid many people are responsible for making this image of professional journalism the news agencies nowadays which are based on trp which many of my friends said they have blamed them for bringing down the level of journalism in today's world but what does the indian audience cater to how can you expect the indian audience that wants serials and shows which are spices among them to watch sober and real news they want spice and they want something current and something very good to look up to it today we as the youth we look forward to bollywood influencers and not what's happening in the country how many of us goes to newspaper today and go through what happened to the dalits today what happened to the rape cases in india rather we go to the internet to find out what was the latest style go by the latest bollywood celeb it is not their fault it is our fault 
nevertheless there are people who are still keeping it revived there are people who are bringing forward the true news how many of us have heard about tanushree pande the lady who exposed the video of police burning the victim's body in the hathra sirit case while the family was locked inside how many of us supported her she was charged with multiple issues and she faced she had to pay a huge price for it but none of us came forward to support her it is our fault over here how many of us had heard about barkha datta who hit the road for 120 days amid covid 19 to show us the plight of the helpless laborers and migrant workers after whom people like sonu sood reached out to them it was them who gave us this news and we don't acknowledge them how many of us know about gauri lankesh one who fought for what is the right wing uh, extremists in country for these issues till her last breath we don't acknowledge their deaths we don't acknowledge them yes we believe that these are hard times for them political influence and the trp is what is contributing them but we forget that news channels which are spicing up things for the trps is not the only source we have digital magazines little newspapers we have magazine newspapers from various agencies why do we tend to go forward to look forward to ndtv where or in aapki adalat when some celeb comes and questions are asked to him why can't we go through two true journals true research papers published by the true professional researchers we don't aim to do that we want something ready on our screens and that is why professional journalism is facing this today if we reawaken ourselves professional journalism will also reawaken itself it is not dying and it will be kept alive by all the people who believe in it it's your support and our support that will strive to keep it alive and remember and mark my words journalism can never die because it is and it will remain the pillar of our democracy the freedom of our voice and the problems and the uh, one who shows our problems to the real world it will never cease to do that and whatever be there will be at least one person who will brought forward current news correct news without alterations without any kind of differences to bring forward this to the true world thank you thank you i would like to call the third person i would like to call the third person from the other team supporting the motion so who is coming from the uh, support, uh, supporting team uh, the third person is there anyone uh, actually it was uh, umra but uh, as she has fallen ill and uh, gave a report that she won't be addressing now so we have uh, shivansh i think from uh, the uh, yeah so i'll take PC. over i'm the fourth one the third one actually backed out she fell ill so yeah go ahead okay yeah so can i start yes sure yeah thank you uh, this how should agree with the fact that professional uh, journalism is dying in india because in modern times whatever news which we get is basically very much fabricated which suits the political intentions and the political stand of a particular news we have been seeing that the news which we are getting is very much fabricated and it is basically it based upon the political pressure which the news firms receive from the political master there has been a mention of the press council of india uh, which has been uh, said as a watchdog of the press wings in the country well i would like to make a reference to a 3 2003 case in the month of april when press council of india actually reprimanded certain uh, news channels for broadcasting advertisements as a fee Uh, they took the fee for broadcasting advertisement as a news such a grave incident was condoned by the press council of india and they just issued a man notification warning those uh, uh, warning those channels to just see that how they could keep the news standards 
safe and uh, they didn't took any proper steps not only that there were two journalists who came forward and proposed a report that how there should be certain corrections regarding this thing of advertisement being broadcasted as a news now press council of india just kept it as a directory for the future reference and didn't even publish it and moving on to support my argument i would like to basically put forward one practical argument and one principled argument moving on to my first practical argument i think that uh, the professional journalism is dying in india because professional because in today's in today's india the news which we are receiving is very much politically fabricated for example i would like to mention um, there's a news channel which is being aired right now as well which is dna on zti on z news it was 3rd of january 2020 uh, it was 3rd of january 2020 when when the host of the show which was mr sudhir chaudhary who took a report from a american ngo the morning consult which said that pm narendra modi is one of the most desired political world leaders in the world similarly there was again a report from a german ngo if these guys are relying on the ngos to broadcast a news they should basically acknowledge the reports which have been put forward by each and every ngo but when this german ngo uh, when this german ngo came up with a survey which said that india was lagging behind in, when it came to hunger index and and uh, malnourished children sudhir chaudhary i would like to quote his words he said that they have a habit of criticizing india and putting a bad face of india in front of the world whereas these ngos were the ones who were being applauded when they were praising our prime minister so now can we conclude that these politi- these politicians are basically pressurizing uh, these journalists to support their uh, their motives and they are uh, generally giving uh, they are generally using this press as their as their campaigning motives now moving on to my principled argument i think as mentioned that democracy is the fourth pillar Uh, i mean i uh, sorry i mean the press is the fourth pillar of our democracy and uh, as the second speaker also mentioned that it acts as the voice of the people well i don't agree to that because the voice of the people is no longer there it's being fabricated completely fabricated it's just being from the people because it's the it's the it's the ministers who are being elected by the people and it is their voice which is being heard and it is a very much threat to the democracy if you take up any examination which the youth of today uh, generally give for the recruitment in various government services or any such services they are said to study the government policies and develop their own opinion which would help them in their professional life as well and in fact in today as well while accessing the while while checking the answer script of such students what the examiners generally do look forward is to that they are supporting the government and their point of view they are not allowed to develop their own opinion they are generally saying that if they are pro government and they are writing the answers which support the modern government policies then only they are qualified or finally recruited into the services and uh, it is a very much threat because if we are instilled this fear it also violates the freedom of speech and expression as well i would here also like to make a mention of the murder case of jamal kashoggi which was a very famous journalist who was assassinated for uh, who was basically assassinated for criticizing the saudi arabia uh, saudi arabia royal family so this shows that uh, professional journalism is not only restricted to the political intervention it is also restricted to various other factors which we might we wish should touch upon for example there are only few large giants in the market so this actually prevents the new entrants from coming into the market as a result of which uh, there are various new talents which are not able to come in to the market now concluding i would like to say that there is a, now that journ that uh the india that the indian professional journalism is at its penultimate stage and we generally need to actually revive it and as it was said that we must uh, as it was said in the name of ethical like the journalist are trained ethically as said by the first uh op- opposition speaker then i then i think that ethical journalism does not mean compromising with the fact because if they are professional they should know that how they should portray it in a they should present the news in a uh, in a, they should present all the facts in a professional manner such that no seditious uh, actions take place thank you thank you 
now i would like to call the third person from the other team defeating the motion thank you good morning ladies and gentlemen i am anindita nayar from sofia high school bangalore and i will be speaking against the motion professional journalism is dying in india today it is quite often and quite rightfully said that the media after the legislative the executive and the judiciary is the fourth pillar of democracy and in the largest democracy in the world the media plays a vital and prevalent role in the country one so one proof of this is that even today while the newspaper industry is dwindling worldwide india is one of the few countries where the industry is still incredibly pro uh, prominent there are more than 100000 newspapers currently registered under the office of registrar of newspapers for india the sales and revenue of the newspaper industry is still incredibly high and this is expected to rise in the following years not to mention the increase in online journalism especially following the covid-19 pandemic journalism is far from dead in india in fact its impact is only on the rise throughout the covid-19 pandemic the media has worked tirelessly to update us on news information and statistics regarding the corona virus today we are more connected than ever and information is more free than ever before as most of you might have heard the 2020 farm laws were withdrawn just yesterday after endless protest and media coverage it is absolutely impossible to deny the impact that journalism had on the government's decision to withdraw the uh, to withdraw the farm laws journalists provided information on the laws the protests the farmers demands and garnered support for the farmers the media coverage in india itself became so huge that it uh, garnered international attention of course there are bad journalists in india of course there are biased journalists in india just as there are bad biased journalists anywhere in the world but as my teammates had uh, earlier mentioned there is a huge huge world of difference between professional and citizen journalism and most of this bad or biased journalism that gives misinformation is actually an example of citizen journalism which unfortunately for us garners more attention than professional journalism these days especially on social media citizenship uh, citizen journalism often taints the name of good proper journalism because these uh, because citizens do not follow the ethics that professional journalists do professional journalism is still alive and kicking it is just the the rise of citizen journalism um that has tainted the name of journalism but the rise of citizen journalism does not mean a decline in professional journalism we as people simply need to look past the bad biased citizen journalism and invest ourselves in professional journalism thank you thank you now we will have the next participant from the other team to support the motion hello am i audible yes you are audible okay thank you so a very good morning to everyone present here we are right now at a position where we need to take into consideration that for the uh, that for the proper functioning of a healthy and efficient democracy uh it is very important that there is a proper presence of an informed public opinion it plays a vital role in the sustenance of a democracy it is very imminent that professional journalism is dying in india now with 9 o'clock debates turning into shouting matches increased in bias and forced opinions media houses playing the same narrative not questioning the status quo in a representative democracy we need to understand and a well functioning republic we need to understand that it is very important that the common people are aware of the ground news or the news that is taking place at the moment in the uh, in the news level uh, in the news level without any fabrication now there are multiple media houses across the country playing to the tune of the political parties and the communal ideas now when a narrative is colored and presented in a biased manner it leads to the formation of a misled and misinformed opinion of the citizens for example during the farmers protest against the farm laws which are now repealed one section of the media maligned the farmers while only a few talked about their about their about their condition the majority of indian journalism is revolving around sensationalism political fabrication 
एक्चुअल येलो जर्नलिज्म सो वॉट इज येलो जर्नलिज्म इट्स विदाउट एनी लेजिटिमेट एविडेंस फॉर now we need to understand the members of the covid 19 vaccines and amenities to uh, to be the ultimate medicine but how many agencies talked about more than 100% increase in the domestic violence to in the shared household rupees worth rupees more than 1000 crores now sensor sensor now sensationalism has led to the news that concerned about lives of bollywood and reporting in news for example how many of us know about the 20 uh, which is founded a railway station at secunderabad railway station how many news channel covered this news handful but almost all news uh, news agencies across india broadcasted throughout weeks regarding aryan khan's drug case now with respect to media trials it is when the media holds someone guilty and propagates a judgment before any legal proceedings has been initiated this happened with the riya chakraborty case where the media had framed riya chakraborty to be nothing but she was completely framed to be guilty now this again violates the rule of law and the basis of the indian judicial system which states that innocent until proven guilty by this course of justice in the nation is diverted now we need to understand that free speech is essential to a democracy but that doesn't mean that a news agency will fabricate the news now i would like to reiterate what our first speaker had mentioned that india right now is moving to a position where india right now is moving to a position where journalism where professional journalism is dying thank you thank you i would like to call the subsequent participant from the other team to place his or her views to defeat the motion good morning to everyone present here i am shreya haldar from oxygen convent school bandel and i am speaking against that professional journalism is dying in india today so professional journalism is the first rough draft of history and it is not the last word but professional journalism is the enemy of pride pomposity and ignorance it is said that journalism media press they are the fourth pillar of our democracy because they are constantly keeping us updated with the political turmoil on the other hand and and it's pressurizing the government to uh, about the leading or uh, and it's pressurizing the government that to how to show accountability of the people on the other today in india the face of media has changed a lot and in fact they have proved their efficiency throughout facts map we the people like uh, people we can be prejudiced even the political leaders also they they too have got some prejudices but the press they cannot be prejudiced they are unbiased they do what the people of the of india think facts matter and this is where the press enters they show the people the real facts and they present their point of view it is not that the press is against the people during the covid-19 pandemic it was the press who went on about the it was a journalist who went on about updating us throughout every time they were risking their lives and updating us about the different covid-19 updates in every part of the country so here we cannot tell that journalism was dying here they were unbiased they were not showing the correct things and they were uh, they were against the government the media coverage that was received by anna hazare brought the issue of corruption into the limelight this is what the press does they bring about they bring they bring several different issues on in the limelight and the people are now and the people get updated on these things so i would like to conclude my statement by saying that journalism is not dying in india it depends on the people that what kind of news they want to uh, gather whether they want to take up bollywood news or whether they want to take up the real political news thank you thank you now we will have the next participant from the other team to support the motion right is this the first speaker the speaker role of the debate excuse me nishan sir sir so uh, could you please excuse one you're calling for the fifth speaker in the debate right 
in the yes yes for yes, yes. support yes. Yes. yes right all right okay um, good morning abhi deep present so how many of you know that india was ruled by the british before 1947 i think everybody here knows this however how many of you know that the indian government today charges its people for sedition with the colonial era law designed by the british to ostracize and to oppress the indians now today this motion asks two questions of us what really is professional journalism and is it really dying in india now to understand professional journalism under you have to understand democracy and its limitations so what is democracy democracy is essentially a group of people in a nation coming together to elect a government for the overall betterment of the nation through certain laws and schemes right and the people in a democratic nation trust this government because the people themselves elect this government however granting unwarranted trust to a group of people who are deciding everything about your life your society your economics literally every aspect of your life is extremely foolish this is where the press comes in the press is essentially an objectification of people coming together and saying that we have to know about the government and through this information we have to distrust the government and we have to criticize them right and this is why the press is the fourth pillar of democracy it is essentially the citizens response to the government because the state does not only include the government the state includes the citizens the government the territory and the sovereignty right and this is why professional journalism deals in ethics accessibility and loyalty to the people all in the attempt to uncover truth and make a more informed and effective nation of people now i would like to reiterate this so we can understand the basis on which we decide whether professional journalism is really dying in india right ethics accessibility loyalty to the people and attempt attempting to uncover truth to make a more informed and effective nation of people let's start with loyalty to the people because this kind of defines both accessibility and ethics in the press system of a country right now today the people or the state is confused with the government whereas the government is not solely the people actually the integration of the state or the nation is supported however if we confuse the state with the government understand that the government decides what is better for the integration of the nation whereas the government is a temporary institution while the state is a permanent institution so if the government always decides what is good or bad for the state or for the nation a certain a certain number or certain set of problems occur first of all the government is not perfect it makes mistakes however it does not make the government entirely fallible because every government literally makes mistakes however if the government is more imperfect than just making mistakes it also tries to hide it also tries to hide its mistakes this is exemplified in modern day india where certain uh, actions of the government are not transparent to the people and are literally hidden or are literally closeted by the government's manipulation of information and control of the press if the government cannot make its action competent what it does is that it manipulates information because manipulating information is much easier than designing effic- uh, efficient schemes that govern the nation and lead it to a more lead it to a more exemplified or lead it to a more ideal situation right we see this in the mainstream media outlets today standing by on the sideline when major nation major national events in four today a speaker of the opposition said that the former protests were exemplified to the nation were very transparent in the, the press reporting on the actual events that transpired however for the first few days of the national farmer protests which were literally one of the biggest protests in the 21st century that took place in india we did not know about what was happening and the government was literally controlling every medium of information through which this data could flow and reach its citizens now the second problem of course is the government uh, government needs legitimacy it needs support and cooperation of the people now the modern press is designed around this deceptive reflection of india let me read out the codification that is the section 124a of the indian penal code which is actually the sedition law through which the government controls how people react or how people actually uphold the duty of promoting national integration in india it speaks whoever by words either spoken or written or by signs or by visible representation or otherwise brings or attempts to bring into hatred or contempt or excites or attempts to excite this affection towards the government established by law in india shall be punished with and continues with jail terms ranging from 3 years to life imprisonment and fines 
that's what it says. Essentially, there is nothing wrong with this law. You know why? Because when we're talking about the integration of the state, we have to uphold public integrity through our actions. And that is the responsibility that citizens uphold towards the government. It is the responsibility that they should uphold towards the government. Right. However, when you replace the word state with the word government, what happens is that you give the government the supreme position in the, in the actual identification of the nation and not the state. But the government is an extension of the people. And if we solely identify the government as the primary stakeholder in the nation, what we're doing is that the, we're giving the government supreme power. And through this law of sedition, what the government of India has done is that it has controlled many journalists, it has oppressed many journalists, whether it be the women of Tripura, Siddiq Kapan, or Prashant Kanojia. What has happened is the government has in intrinsically antagonized any information that compromises its position in the minds of in the minds of the Indian people. It's upholding its legitimacy through manipulation. Right. And finally, what happens is the manipulation of truth. What I spoke about, the attempt to uncover truth, to support the people, to make a more informed and better nation. The government, if the government can manipulate information, the government can control what is flowing to us. The government can control our minds, right? And if our minds are controlled and if we're not properly informed, what happens? Conflict arises. Whether we push election chaos in West Bengal, communal riots throughout the country, COVID-19 misinformation, or riots happening in Kashmir, and literally the criminalization of people for supporting the victory of Pakistan over India in the T20 Cricket World Cup. So many people have been criminalized for supporting another nation in a game of cricket, whether it be sensitive matter between India and Pakistan. If literally these petty matters are taken over by the government, can you realize how the government controls nuanced issues which affect our everyday lives? And that is how the government literally is misguiding us in the search for truth. Now, the first speaker of side opposition spoke about the distinctions between citizen journalism and professional journalism, and I respected his speech because he was very technical and he outlined that professional journalism is governed by a code of ethics. However, understand the fact that the ethics of professional, if the ethics of professional journalism is flawed, and you say that professional journalism is guided by ethics, then professional journalism inherently itself is flawed because the government defines the ethics if the government is given supreme power in deciding what is better for the state through its laws of sedition, if the government can use the law of sedition to control journalism, to control professional journalism, professional journalism in itself is not helping the nation in any sense. It's actually degrading the state of the nation, it's actually degrading the state of the minds of the people in the nation, and it is not making a unified nation, but kind of dissolving this unity that we shall ourselves hold. Oh, thank you. Excuse me, you have already uh, passed your time. It's already eight minutes. So you need to stop. I'm sorry. I like there was no there was no notification of the sorry muted. The bell was rung at uh, the uh, at five minutes. Okay, you can conclude your speech. Wrap up it. Wrap up it. Yeah. I should do it. Okay, fine. Thank you. I would like to call upon the fifth participant from the other team to place his or her views against the motion. I think I'm audible and visible. Yes, you are. Yes, thank you. Sorry. Uh, good morning to everybody. Good morning to the honorable and respectable judges as well as my near and dear friends today who are present. And we know this today's in-house, uh, the motion is professional journalism is dying in India today. And I am surely against it. And why? I will tell, him, uh, I will tell it in the, uh, I will conclude it in my discussion. First, we have to know that journalism is not a mere job as all are telling that it is the fourth pillar. We know everybody. And beyond that, uh, we know its function. It's educate the public about the different events and issues, how they will affect their lives. They, uh, and they became politically aware of this. It provides the valuable information for all. It is basically a source of information for our big source, biggest source, I think. And now, uh, many of my friends were telling about the uh, uh, volume. They were concentrating on the volume, volume that they are. 
uh, they are concentrating. But I think why they are smelling the bad things? They have to rather they can concentrate on the good things, the good side, the good aspects of the media. For uh, example, I can say about my previous friends were telling about the Hatras cases and many more. But how uh, uh, the role of media in that point of time? So we all know that. So we should concentrate. We should rather concentrate on the uh, good things of the media uh, rather than these bad things. And the media is not dying in this India to be a professional. Journalism is not dying. The greatest proof I can give uh, my previous uh, friend troll that the greatest thing is that the number of newspaper that is sold uh, in India we know. So I think it is the greatest proof I can give. <clears throat> and beyond that, I, I want to elaborate why we need uh, professional journalism. First, I would like to say about the investigative skills. Good newspaper journalists have an analytical mind and the base stories on evidence and facts, not emotion. We have kept in mind. They are uh, good observers and uh, instinctively sense uh, when there is much more to story than what is being shared at a news conference. For example, uh, critical thinking, uh, critical thinking skills are crucial when waiting conflict accounts for an incident and assessing the credibility of sources. They exercise the sound judgment that is very important when blogging or writing yet universified, uh, unver uh, unverified information on the newspaper website and uh, during the breaking stories, even when faced with looming deadlines, good newspaper journalists take time to get a balanced accounting for the subject and we should uh, also concentrate on the on the knowledge of technology that they have as a part of the job newspaper journalists follow and use social media appropriately to produce immediate and transparent coverage of ha happening events they know how to use internet to research the stories and access to the public records when engaging in the uh, investigative journalism, we have to keep in. Uh, we have to keep this in our mind. And uh, expert communication skill that is also very important, as we know that the newspaper journalist uh, must be a skilled communicators to the interview sources and write in depth stories. Unlike radio, television, and online journalists, they go far beyond sound bites and superficial coverages of a situation. Newspaper journalists include background information and needed detail to give context to the more nuanced understanding of the issue by the reader. Typically, journalists have a bachelor's degree in the communication of journalism and relevant undergraduate experience, such as writing for a college newspaper. Uh, 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 I think we should concentrate on another thing. That, uh, that is the main thing, I think, that about the ethics and their integrity. The solid ethical core characterizes a good journalist. We know that very much. Now, fairness, fairness, objectivity, honesty matters when reporting everything from local referendums and proposed state taxes increases to presidential election. Professional journalists abhor fake news based on rumors, and <coughs> reporters should only share opinions in newspaper editorial places, they step aside if covering the, that stories would be conflict of interest and such as writing a feature, article about the family members, uh, new restaurant, etc. we can say. Now, uh, courage and boldness. This is also a very important factor, I think, because uh, talking about the courage and boldness, good journalists push themselves to the deeper and ask tough questions. They put personal feelings aside to boldly honor truly about the newsworthy people, places, and events. Courage is vital to investigate what is happening uh, at the scene. So I think I should end up here by saying that we should not only concentrate to the bad things, but almost also the good things of the media. And we should encourage that in order to, uh, I think, to, uh, to, I think, the professional media to arise and to awake, I think.
थैंक यू वेरी मच टू एवरीबडी थैंक यू थैंक यू आई वुड लाइक टू कॉल अपॉन द लास्ट पार्टिसिपेंट फ्रॉम द फोर टीम टू ब्रिंग अ कंक्लूजन टू दायर टीम एफर्ट थ्रू हर स्पीच Yes. Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Nanika Bhosh. I am from SBJS, and I will be concluding uh, for my team, which is speaking for the motion. So, when a little-known YouTube channel posted a video on February 11th calling for some of India's most prominent journalists to be hanged, it marked a new low for India's free press. This video was shared by a host of right-wing figures, despite its call to execute at least five senior journalists. My worthy opponent asked why we don't turn to these small newspapers and sites. To him, I would like to say that these five journalists were all from India's clutch of independent online news media. He also mentioned several names of people who we should have known about but did not. So that is a failure on the part of the media for failing to inform us about these incidents. The burden of, of reporting and showcasing important affairs falls on the media and not the common man. Perhaps more, more people would know about the likes of Barkhadat if the media would have chose. And to showcase her instead of who Katrina Kaif is dating. If the media does not report the plain and boring news, who do you think will? Should we not care about the uh, policies being made or people being wrongfully convicted of the rising crime rate just because it does not have drama or spice? My worthy opponent asked how journalism could be dying in the world's largest democracy. To him, I would like to say that in a country where journalists are literally dying for doing their jobs. This idea is not so far behind. The call for executing journalists appeared to stoop to a new low in the rising attack against India's independent journalists and media over the last five years, marked in 2020 by a surge of government raids and criminal cases. While at the same time, the police took no action against the man who called for these hangings. I agree that media is not solely responsible for this phenomena. The government is very much to blame. These attacks on media soared in 2019 and 20, most of all in Kashmir, as journalists in the conflict-ridden region faced rising intimidation and surveillance after th uh, Article 370 of the Indian Constitution was abolished in August 2019. Was this free speech? The Kashmir playbook in controlling the media through criminal cases, including rules related to sedition and terrorism, is now definitely applicable to the rest of the country. criminal cases and arrests are increasingly common amongst journalists rejecting the official narrative in the last week of january 2021 as a two month demonstration by farmers on the borders of india's capital town volatile threatening to turn into an international embarrassment the government's response was a flurry of actions to silence the press sedition cases sedition which might i add for the benefit of my op opponents who claim that journalism was born to protest against oppressive british practices was a practice that was used by the british to suppress indians Are we now to follow the same practices that were used by the colonizers who terrorized our country for nearly two centuries? Terrorism cases were filed against six journalists. Meanwhile, several of these TV channels blamed the farmer protests for limited oxygen supplies for COVID-19 patients. The supplies were actually scarce due to poor public health infrastructure. This reporting is not only misleading and traumatic to those affected by the pandemic, but also poses a major threat to India's vibrant democracy. For the all the apparent vibrancy of the Indian media landscape, the problem of concentrated media ownership through politically affiliated entities and interdependence between media, business, and politics have posed an increasingly worrying problem. Currently, thirty-six percent of daily newspapers earn over half of their total income from the government of India, and most major TV uh, stations have owners who serve as politicians themselves or who are family members in politics. The Press Freedom Index listed India at 142 out of 180 countries in 2020, behind countries such as Afghanistan and South Sudan, and lower than its rank in of 133 in 2016 and 140 in 2014. The tensions and hostility towards a journalist further deteriorates an increasingly and frankly very worrying polarized political atmosphere. The media are too divided with inflammatory reporters and social media posts, including hate speech, with no legal consequences. While India has some of the highest circulation of newspapers in the world, I agree. It also, unfortunately, has high media bias rates and one of the lowest press freedom rankings for democracies. In a country where most of the citizens are not qualified enough to distinguish the real from the fake, it is the duty of the media to present all the facts, regardless of any political agendas. A biased media also prevents citizens from uh, receiving information that might be essential to public well-being by filtering information through a lens that supports government interests first. 
In a democratic society, a critical press is essential for holding the government accountable for its actions and motivating it to change its practices. This media bias can continue to uh, critic backsliding and must be addressed by media outlets. Only then can media in India properly do its job, serving to inform, not influence the public. Thank you. Thank you. Since Umrah Fatima has backed out, dear judges, we are left with two participants from the team defeating the motion. So we will now hear the sixth participant putting forth his or her views. Am I clearly visible and audible? Yes, you are. Good journalism is not dying. It's getting bigger and bigger, says senior journalist Ram Kamal Jha. So are journalists really this cold-hearted, vicious people devoid of humanity who sell their conscience for their money and materialistic gains? Or are they people who are instruments of social change? People who have been framed to be perceived in that way. A very good morning to everyone present here. I am Rishabh Mitra of South City International School and I firmly stand against today's motion that professional journalism is dying in India. Journalism allows us to express our views, opinions and ideas and falls under Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights under the Indian Constitution. And there are more and more people who are choosing journalism as a career for instance, this year, the, Ra the Ramnath Goenka Award, an award that is given to, ju to journalists who contribute greatly to the field, got 562 applications, the highest it has ever gotten, which shows that journalism is a booming career. It's just that bad journalism has got a lot more noise than it ever did before. And in the words of the chief career navigator, journalism is not simply a shallow field. It has brought forth new dimensions, thoughts, opinions, and ideas. The problem is perception. When the government places hidden camera or brings out news faulting one particular journalist and making them seem like they're this terrible person, that creates a perception that may not be the reality. The reality may have been created. So when we look at a journalist in a negative way or as sold, that may not be true. It may be that the government has altered that information. And to counterattack a lot of the points of the four party, the media, if the media's influence was so much, if every single journalist was sold off, how is the financial size of the media tech company so much lower for instance, the highest newspaper, uh, the richest newspaper industry has made only a profit, profit of about $1 billion, which is rupees 6,700 crores. And now when you compare that to Reliance's immense profit of rupees 6.9 lakh crores or Billa India's rupees 2.6 lakh crores. And it's worse that people have started looking and perceiving journalists, journalists in that way. Because that may not, of course, there are journalists who sell their conscience for their money. There are journalists who let go of their own thoughts and opinions just to get heaps of those green, those green dollars. But there are also journalists who work for the betterment of the country and are instruments for social change. To take an example, on 17th May, Smitha Ranjan was covering um, Gandhiji's birthday, and she found a 21-year-old who had a college degree, the first of his family, working selflessly. She was touched because instead of getting a nine-to-five job, he was serving others selflessly. In fact, her career for journalism got an accidental start because she had a bachelor's in business, and then she was offered a nine-to-five job in journalism, and she took it. It took her opinion of journalism up so many notches. Today, she's the assistant director of DNA, not the double helical structure, but the newspaper company, Daily News and Analysis. And she covers the selfless acts of these individuals and these people. So really, there are two sides of the same coin. And in the same way, there are two sides to this argument. Just like there are police officers who are corrupt, who are bought by the, uh, by the government, 
there are also police officers who try to enforce law and make the world a better place. Just like there are polit uh, political officers and civil servants who are corrupt, there are also civil servants and political officers who work to better the country. In the same way, there are journalists who definitely let go of their opinions and provide false and spicy information. But there are also journalists who work for the betterment of the country and who express their opinions freely. For instance, Pranov Roy, who has become such an instrumental figure in NDTV, or take the example of uh, uh, take the example of Gauri, who spoke so openly about the controversial matters about India and was not afraid of government repression. Shikhar Gupta, in his newspaper, The Print, said that in his 37 years of experience, he was never asked to sell off his news by his two employers. Was I ever asked to sell off my news by my employers? He says. As much as I would like to say that those claims are true and I defied that heroically, I was denied that opportunity by two one employers. So really, when we look at professional journalism as a career and say that there are only that, that now the, the journalist, the journalism career has completely declined, we need to understand that there's a different side to that argument as well. We need to understand that there are journalists who are working to become instruments of social change. And with that, I rest my case, but not my stance. Thank you very much. Thank you. The final participant of the against team will round up the debate for this side. I would like to call on the participant to deliver his or her speech. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay. A very good morning to one and all present here. My name is Harshita Upadhyay and I'm the concluding speaker for the team going against the motion. So my fe uh, fellow speakers, they have remarked on the importance of professional journalism and how it's different from creative journalism. Professional journalists, they're professional because they're trained in their work and they follow a set of ethical guidelines, which they try their best to follow. Professional journalists, they take responsibility for their work and they do not take pleasure in sending news as fast as possible, whether it's at the cost of time, whether it's fake, whether it's true. Whatever fake news that we see today, it is completely bogus and that is a part of citizen journalism. What the opposition said regarding the fact that the news we hear about, we read about in India is not true, I wonder where you get that information from. Because the news which is given by famous news channels such as NDTV, India Today, Z News, they are quite well researched. And as for the government stance thing, there's so many channels that support the government and so many that do not. And in order to give ourselves a well-rounded view, we must listen to both sides before forming our own opinions. Professional journalism, it does not only contain basic news channels, it also contains, you know, entertainment news that we get, sports news, nature journalism, war journalism, and it all depends on our interests and what we wish to see. As for the entertainment news uh, thing which the opposition brought up, this is what is consumed by Indian media. Thousands, no, millions and millions of people follow these celebrities on social media. And you, and you know, they even flock to their houses to wish them on their birthdays. If we are so obsessed with them, it's obvious that media is going to eat up this information. Entertainment journalists, they do their work. They are also professional journalists, journalists and they're working hard to cater to those people who enjoy such information. And, you know, while we watch sports channels, we use it to fuel our entertainment, don't we? We listen to the sports journalists and we read about these things on, you know, uh, newspapers as well. Are they completely wrong? Are they not reporting exactly what we see? As for the negative news, if negative news is what prevails in our country, why should we not know about it? Why should we not know the truth about what prevails around us? One of the fellow speakers in my team, they pointed out the fact that we do not read between the lines. We do not read up on the information created by specialists, scientists, and actual professionals. We blindly consume whatever we get to know, no matter from where. We do not verify our resources. Newspapers are extremely essential in a country like India. There are so many rural people that do not have access to internet or cable TV. These people, they depend on newspapers. Print journalism is also professional journalism. It focuses on providing news to people who live in rural areas who do not have such facilities. And these people, they're wholeheartedly doing their job. Now let's take some examples. Ravish Kumar, his wit, his sarcastic commentary, his fact-based reporting, 
all of this has opened new doors for hindi television journalism with audience you know he he has continued to unearth countless stories about not only mainstream news also about rural areas villagers their voice he got a prime time spot in 2010 he was also awarded with Ray- raymond max ac award which is we got this because he harnessed harnessed journalism to give voice to the voiceless and this is internationally acclaimed with so many more people just like him for example barkha dat shekhar gupta we absolutely cannot say that journalism that professional journalism in india is dying we have these people to look up to and journalism in india i admit it is facing challenging times no doubt but the, there are people who exist who are trying to bring the truth to us day in and day out thank you thank you the judges have expressed their desire to hear shonak saha again since he faced a lot of internet issues and could not be heard hello am i audible and visible yes you are audible all right greetings once again this is shonak saha for the functioning of a healthy and efficient democracy it is very important that there is a proper press and media system established in the country so that there is a check on the government and the presence of an informed public opinion it plays a vital role in the sustenance of a democracy it is very it is very imminent that professional journalism is dying in india with 9 o'clock debates turning into shouting matches increase in biased and forced opinions and silencing of accurate news channels the last member of the against team said that we must form our opinion by listening to both the types of news agencies one which supports the ruling party and the other which doesn't but how are we supposed to do it if the news houses not supporting the government are continuously harsh silenced and oppressed now media houses playing the same narrative not questioning the status quo is a major factor in a representative democracy and a well functioning republic it is very important that the common people are aware of the actual happenings in the country and the ground level news there are multiple media houses across the country playing to the tune of political parties and communal ideas now when a narrative is colored and presented in a biased manner it leads to the formation of pretexts and misleads and misinforms the opinion of the citizens for example during the farmer protests against the farm laws which are now repealed one section of the media maligned the farmers while only a few talked about their miserable conditions in the cold in the belly cold of 3 degree celsius or 1 degree celsius they had no food and amenities the majority of indian journalism is revolving around sensationalism political fabrication media trials and yellow journalism so what is yellow journalism it is using exaggerated statements without any legitimate evidence for more sales and viewership of the news now during the first waves of covid-19 multiple biased news agencies propagated medically unproven vaccines and amenities to be the ultimate medicine but how many uh, agencies talked about more than 100% increase in domestic violence against women and questioned the right to safe uh, the right to safe uh, in the uh, to, and the right to reside in the shared household to a safe one how many questioned the pm cares fund with uh, with worth rupees 3000 crores a crore with a c sensationalism has led to the coverage of news that are concerned about the lives of bollywood movie celebrities and powerful businessmen rather than the actual pertinent news for example 22 kilograms of marijuana was found on train at sukandrabad railway station how many news channel covered this news how many of us know it handful but almost all news agencies in india broadcasted throughout weeks regarding aryan khan's drug case now with respect to media trials it is when the media holds someone guilty and propagates a judgment before any legal proceeding has taken place or initiated now this violates the rule of law and the proce- uh, and the basis of the indian judicial system which states that innocent until proven guilty by this course by this the course of justice is devi- is deviated and diverted by the media i would like to reiterate the fact that india's media universe has changed news television ha- news television has descended from journalism into pulverizing propaganda that punish uh, that pushes political views and bullies contrary opinion thank you thank you shonak dear judges we are going to give a 5 minutes window for the team members to coordinate and decide who will ask questions during the rebuttal round 
and who will answer them the same person cannot ask an answer do not leave the meeting we will resume the rebuttal round in 5 minutes uh can each participant ask only one question uh and okay. one participant mm -hmm. and one participant it will be absolutely depending on the team and only one participant can ask only one question and same cannot uh, answer oh uh, so uh, will we be put into a room or uh, another breakout room or we can discuss it to our groups and all you stay in the meeting and you can discuss you know groups but you have to stay in the meeting i hope everyone is clear excuse me yes uh while asking the question can we direct the question to a particular member of the opposition can we refer to any particular member or will we be asking it to the entire opposition team as a whole you can uh, directly uh, ask a particular participant okay. thank you and i hope the two group leaders are taking the initiative to uh, see uh, who the who are the three people who are the three participants going to question and who are the three participants who are going to answer and those six should not be the same person Uh, and one more thing, if let's say if we are asked a direct question, then uh, only the selected ones will be answering it, or the question to uh, or the person to whom the question is asked, he will be answering it. My dear participants. I hope you can hear me. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes. There'll be the team leader will choose three participants who will ask a question to the other team. These three participants who will ask a question cannot be the ones that will answer. I would request you not to direct a question to a particular member of the team because that would make the other team uh, be in a difficult position. 
So it's going to put the other team in a difficult position because the person to whom you're asking a question might not be the past person whom they have selected to answer the question. So please leave it to the other team to decide who's going to answer the question that you have posed. I hope I have been clear. But uh, if you want to point out something from a person's speech, uh, how can we like uh, do it sure. unanimous sure. as a team? Sure. So you just say that this person has mentioned so and so, and I would like the team to clarify their stance on this particular aspect. Now, have right. you got me? Right. So the team is now going to answer. So the team leader decides who's now going to answer that. Thank you, participants. Team leaders, have you made your decisions? Oh, yes. Yes. Team leaders, could you please switch your cameras on and let us know which three participants of your team will ask the question and which three participants of your team will answer the questions of the opposition team? Um, uh, for the core team, uh, I, Om Mahata, uh, Shonak Saha, and, uh, and Shivansh, uh, yeah, Shivansh, uh, we are we three are going to uh, pose the questions to the opposing group, uh, ask the question to opposing group, and uh, the rest of our uh, three members, that is Noyanika Ghosh and uh, Pratyuman Nahata, and uh, the last one, uh, Devanshi Banerjee. We th uh, they three are going to answer the questions. So from the against team, uh, Harshita. Shreya and myself will be asking questions, and um, Dhruv, Rishabh, and Anandata will answer questions. Nikhil, could you please repeat? Uh, from the against team, Harshita, Shreya, and myself will be asking questions. Uh, Dhruv, Rishabh, and Anandata will answer questions. Excuse me, uh, Harshita, Sriya, and you will be asking the questions, right? Yes. That's correct. Yes. And the one who will be answering, Dhruv. Dhruv. Um, then it's whatever. Yep. Dhruv, Rishav, and uh, Anandita. Okay, thank you. Uh, dear judges, we are now like to begin the rebuttal round.
we would now like Om Mohata to pose a question to the opposing team. Thank you. Thank you for the recognition. My worthy opponent, Dhruv Junjunwala, said that since we like spice and masala and news, and we like to hear about Bollywood stars and their lives rather than about the social issues and news around the world, it gives the journalist a free go to, to publish about Bollywood and basically not talk about the other important issues. Firstly, it should be I or some instead of we. And secondly, saying that they do it for TRP, which according to Dhruv is a good enough reason for leaving out deaths of four farmers on a protest allegedly by the son of a local BJP leader, giving the whole screen time on the Aryan Khan case, paparazzi following actresses to every place they go, journalists obsessed with celebrity weddings. Does Dhruv intend to say that journalism is a source of entertainment with showcase of daily lives of Bollywood stars instead of educating and providing unbiased news to the people? Is journalism a source of money and entertainment and the purposes of journalism is just to earn money through TRP? Please justify your statement. Oh, can I answer? Yes, you can. Thank you so much, Om, for your question. First of all, I would like to point out that as you said, it is I and some and not we. Similarly, it is a part of journalism. That is the entertainment journalism that goes for the Bollywood celebs. The paparazzi, its only work is to go forward after the celebs. The true journalism lies on many other platforms, which you and me don't check. Do, in a newspaper, do you go forward in reading the side articles related to other cases? We go forward for the Bollywood news. And once again, it is only some news channels who go on every day propose, uh, proposing about the Bollywood celebs. There are many news agencies, many news media channels that are not so popular, but they show light on all these issues. For example, take the issue of Tanushri Pandey. Uh, uh, Tanushri Pandey, one of the members of the uh, India TV, she was the one who exposed the police burning the body of the Hathras gang rape incident. She was one who exposed it. There are many such news channels who don't run after this. Therefore, I would like to recommend you to check your facts and check the proper and some feasible news agencies rather than going forward with the common masses and going forward with some popular news agencies which only focus on Bollywood celebs. It is we who also need to clarify our research. Thank you. Thank you, Dhruv. I would like to call Harshita to pose a question to the other team. Okay. So, uh, Anik Chatterjee from the other team uh, said that the media is no longer the voice of the people and that the media is from the people and it is, op uh, it is the opinion of elected ministers. However, media is quite literally the people. If the media is reporting on Aryan Khan's drug scandal, the case, it's because people care about it. And that's why they're reporting on it, not the government. So how is media no longer a voice of the people? Thank you for the question. From the other team, who would like to answer? I'll answer the question. Um... Okay, I do not say this, but uh, you said how uh, your question was, how, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, how is the media not, uh, uh, how is the media responsible for the people caring about uh, the Aryan Khan case? People care about the Aryan Khan case, sure. If you're at uh, a celebrity status, a public figure, people will care about you. Our point that our team has been trying to make is not to not display these cases but give more importance to real issues, to issues that actually matter, to uh, the farmer protests that are going on, to the people who are dying, to the Hathras cases. Those are not given even half the attention that the Aryan Khan case is given. Is it truly necessary to have a, a, a one hour dedicated to why Aryan Khan was caught or why he was not guilty? The courts are doing their jobs. Let them do it. Why does the media decide to pay judge, jury, and executioner in such a case where it does not have to. It can rather dedicate that time to real issues, to things that people need to listen to, not want to. 
the public will never understand the need for such issues if they don't even know them the only reason why we know about the farmer protests in the first place is because the media very lately might i add uh, is that it reported it so before that how will the masses know about it how will we be able to focus on issues how will they want to know about this if the media never reports it thank you now it's shonak stern to ask his question thank you so much for the recognition so one of the members of the opposing team mentioned that the news agencies state only facts and how it helped during the covid 19 situation but owing to the fact that cow zudin or gomutra was propagated by various regional news agencies in parts of uttar pradesh as the best way to immunize against the virus without any medical verif verification or test which led to the increase in misbeliefs of the illiterate man and loss of trust towards vaccine led to the misinformation and mis and people were misled to this so how would the team would like to justify their statements regarding this yes thank you so much for your question so basically the clay, of course there has been fake news that has been spread because there are various news uh, the media the, the media tech company is large there are various news agencies so there are certain news agencies that have definitely spread fake information without actually um clarifying with a uh, medical and other doc uh, with with medical experts and doctors but there are also news agencies that did spread the truth there were news agencies that clarif that had given reliable and uh, justified information and they had carried out their uh, research in order to make sure that the that in the covid-19 false news is not spread so of course yes there was a lot there was a spiral of false news but really there were also more news tech co news companies that talked about how they uh, that talk that talked more so about how we can a uh, kind of a uh, fight through the virus and how and they and they back their uh, research with a, uh, and they back their data with a great deal of research and statistical analysis so really yes there are people who may have spread fake news there always are people who spread fake news and obviously that gets stimulated through whatsapp statuses as well but there are also people who spread a lot who carried out a lot of research and um, i think those news spread a lot more i do not remember hearing about this news but i definitely hear, remember hearing about vaccines and the development of the vaccines from various uh, from the large newspaper companies like let's say ndtv or the indian india times etc so now it's thank you uh, now it's shreya's turn to ask her question thank you so much for the recognition given to me so my question is that one of the members of the opposing team said that uh, the media has got more interest in bollywood it's not just bollywood there are journalists who do ground re uh, ground research one such person's name is danish siddiqui who was born in delhi and died in afghanistan while cover covering a clash between afghan security forces and taliban so what are your thoughts on this um right um, thank you for your question ma'am so thing is that it's not it's not an answer that can be you know presented to you in black and black or white essentially what we talking about when we talking about indian media is we talking about the by um, kind of a two prong media structure which deals in entertainment as well as political issues right the very reason why the proposition has propounded on the end on the issue of entertainment is that much of the population today demands the news on entertainment and if much of the population feeds off of that entertainment news and if we as a if we as a population are not willing to know more or much about the political or sensitive issues then it is clear that from the demand side of things the supply side of things is going to be placing more emphasis on entertainment news now that does not mean that professional journalism is not dying when we talk about professional journalism we talking about more than the uh, more than one stakeholder we not talking about the journalists as stakeholders we also talking about the citizens as stakeholders and what the citizens do affect professional journalism as well and talking about political issues we obviously any mo most of the countries which have democracies installed have reported on political news through their linkage through their linkage institutions and through their media institutions however we also have to understand that like today in today's social political sphere the most sensitive reportage on news 
is censored or is met with a lot of opposition from parties supporting the government and at times the government themselves. And if the government is cultivating a culture wherein its supporters themselves are opposing news on sensitive matters, are opposing critical news on sensitive matters, then we see that professional journalism is not taking the route it should take and is kind of placing emphasis on the wrong things, which, which we also have to take responsibility for. But it doesn't mean that professional journalism is not dying. Thank you. Now it's Shivansu's turn to ask this question. Hello, Shivansh. Uh, yeah, can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. you are audible. Uh, yeah, can I please switch off my camera because I'm facing some severe network issues. Hello? Yes, sure. Uh, yeah. So my question is that the opposition mentioned that the press can't be prejudiced for the financial gains. Then why is that they run so much after TRPs and as mentioned by the second opposition speaker that uh, that running after TRPs is nothing wrong and uh, broadcasting the spicy news which the people want is nothing wrong. So it should be that they should try to strike a balance in between the social issues which they should prioritize much more because, uh, because I think that these are the issues which affect the real life. And as far as uh, research-based uh, journalism is concerned i think that research can be researched work can be tailored and presented in a way that it suits our purpose because here as we are debating we also have done the research and we are speaking only about the things which suit our purpose so don't you think that the research journalism can be even more biased thank you uh, sorry, uh, could I just ask the um, opponent to clarify his question? I didn't quite get it. I didn't uh, hear it properly. Uh, I think clarify. my question is that uh, it was mentioned by one of his speakers that uh, that press can't be prejudiced for, for uh, financial gains. So why is that they run so much after TRPs and try to portray the spicy news which they think that would boost their TRPs? And uh, for instance, like the Bollywood issues, which we are discussing. So is, uh, it is better that if they are not running after TRP, it's better that they should strike a balance uh, in airing the social issues, which affect the common man's life and the Bollywood issues as well. So do you think that uh, press can't be prejudiced? Um, okay, uh, to clarify, I don't think we um, meant that the press can never ever be prejudiced because I believe um, a few of us did mention in our speeches that there are obviously biased press agencies or journalists and there are, you know, bad press agencies or journalists. Um, but like we mentioned before, there's a certain segment of journalism that's entertainment journalism, which is solely focused on things like, you know, the Bollywood drama and um, all the issues in the entertainment industry and such, right? Uh, there is also the political side, but the reason that, and it's not that, you know, this uh, political side of things is, you know, declining in any way, which is why we are arguing that professional journalism itself is not dying. It is only the fact that um, people are looking more for the entertainment side of things. It doesn't fall on the me uh, media itself, it falls on us as citizens because we as citizens are, well, not all of us, um, but like a large majority of um, citizens are looking for the entertainment. They're looking for the spicy drama, right? Um, so that that's not some, that doesn't mean that uh, professional journalism itself is in decline. I hope that answer was to your satisfaction. Yep, okay. Thank you. Now it's Nichols' turn to ask his question. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay, so the opposition statement seemed more like a nine o'clock debate to me with a discussion on Bollywood. So, and people report Bollywood because that's what people want to hear. There are still professional journalists who report accurate facts. And also, uh, every journalist has a department which is uh, on every social issue. So uh, all the social and pressing issues of our society are already answered. So my question is, why does the opposition think that every form of uh, report, whether it's uh, about an, an accurate report about some farmer's issue or an or 
you know, about some Bollywood star. Why do they have a problem? Why, why is it considered the death of journalism in India as being what? Why is every form of uh, every report that is put out as said in the statement is the death of journalism in India as being what? Can you please repeat your question? I had some problem in hearing. Can you please repeat it? Oh, I couldn't hear you. Uh, Nikhil, she is having uh, some issues. So could you please repeat the question once more, Nikhil? Okay, my apologies. Uh, so my question is, um, why does the opposition think that every report that is published, whether it's an accurate report on some farmer's issue or a report on some Bollywood star's life, why do they think, as stated in their speeches, is considered the death of journalism in India as we know? See, uh, we didn't mention that always the reporters, they are always uh, making news on uh, Bollywood stars or like that. But as I mentioned, that most of the time we see nowadays that people, that the news makers, they focus on these kind of uh, these Bollywood stars and actresses because they think that when they show this to people, they can actually divert the people from the real sense. As I already said, no one wants to uh, make the government, uh, does not want to go against the government. So if they just... Uh, engage the people in this kind of act, uh, this kind of news, they can hide the actual news. Thank you. Thank you. I would now like my Mapanna to take over. Good afternoon, everyone. We sincerely regret the fact that we have not given a wholesome introduction of our two experienced judges. We would like to redress our wrong and speak about their achievements. I would like Ma'am Shiyoshi Ghosh to, uh, to actually switch her camera on, please. Ma'am Shiyoshi Ghosh. Ma'am Shriyoshi Ghosh is currently working at the Department of Higher Education, the government of West Bengal. She's posted at Jhargram Raj College, Girls' Wing. She has submitted her thesis on the private sphere of working at the IT sector, a study in urban Kolkata. She's a table presider and mentor at the SSP. She is, uh, sorry, and uh, a table presider and a mentor at the SSSP. I'm really very sorry for that error, unintentional. And American Sociological Association. She's also a gold medalist in sociology from the University of Calcutta. I would request Ma'am Shiyoshi Ghosh to please share your views on the event, how you liked the event, Ma'am. Ma'am Shiyoshi, if you could unmute yourself. Yes, yes, I was having some trouble yes. with the technology. I'm not really yes. good with it. Thank you so much, uh, Ma'am Aparna. And uh, this is a real pleasure to be here. I guess I'm audible to everyone. Uh, it, was, it was amazing. And I would like to thank uh, uh, DBL, Don Bosco Lilua, for organizing such a wonderful debate. And uh, uh, more than judging, I was, I was, uh, I was intently listening and, and I was noting down some points I did not know about. So um, thank you so much. Now, regarding the topic, uh, uh, professional journalism is dying in India. I have a lot to say, but I would not like to uh, say my stance before the result uh, comes out. But uh, it, it is an amazing uh, uh, debate, of course, and all the participants, you have been really, really in, uh, charismatic because there is a point for charisma here, as I can say. And um, uh, to be able to participate and learn and engage in this mutual uh, uh, exchange of ideas, I think uh, it's, it's a wonderful platform. Now, um, 
as far as the results are concerned all of you were good and of course the results will be declared in a couple of minutes now regarding uh, this topic uh, professional journalism is dying in india as i said that uh, this is a very very debatable topic because uh, there have been lot of researches going on in and around india uh, regarding professional journalism and since uh, uh, media is one of the papers we teach in college um, i can suggest a book to all of you that uh, not one of you have mentioned that actually uh, uh, i was little disappointed because uh, i was i was hoping to listen something about nam shamsky because um, nam shamsky is working a lot on manufacturing consent and how media is manufacturing uh, propaganda how media is trying to influence public opinion so there is no escape as i can see media might or might not be biased they they the uh, media might or might not engage in partisan politics but one thing that is for sure is uh, we cannot live without uh, media nowadays and for if every bit of information we have to rely on on the media now regarding whether it's professional quote on quote or not uh, that is debatable but what i'm very sure of that we have uh, with n number of channels coming up like during our time we used to only have dd uh, durdarshan um, and we used to have just one slot mentioned for the news and the other for the entertainment so there used to be a dichotomization of of news uh, or dichotomization of varied kind of news but now we don't have that we have information uh, uh, in our phone so we can access information on the go so because of that we are given the choices we can we can choose information now what we want to focus or we do not want to focus on so um as a teacher i can i can suggest that please go through nam chomsky once and since he's doing a wonderful job on manufacturing content i think uh, you will get a lot of lot of uh, information from that and one of you have mentioned yellow journalism i i was about to speak on that so um yes of course uh, yellow journalism it is it is uh, nowadays a buzzword and uh, it, it it is on the rise because uh, media is all about as we know garnering trp uh, but we will talk more about this but uh, thank you so much uh, don bosco for for inviting me my respected teachers who are listening to me right now and my dear dear participants you have been really really informative and of course factual i hope i wish all the best to all of you and uh, keep it up keep up the good work thank you so much thank you ma thank you very much thank you i'll also go through that book now surely thank you we really feel indebted that you've taken out time to be here with us ma'am thank you i would like to now call uh, call upon our second judge sir shubhayu mojumdar i would like him to switch his camera on as i read about him in fact i am going to quote what he has written writing about myself is more difficult than i thought would be but here it goes i have been a newspaper editor for the last 20 odd years which has meant at least for me a lifetime of working late shifts fueled by endless cups of really strong coffee six days a week come rain or shine without any holidays but with the satisfaction of knowing that countless people are reading what i want them to see and the way i want them to see it the next morning i am a proud former pupil of don bosco lelua where as my former teacher will tell you i probably spent more time doing quizzes and debates and music practice than i did on my classwork and those 13 years of school from 1984 to 1997 were without a shadow of doubt some of the best days of my life everything i need to survive the world outside i learned in school some from the textbooks but more from my teachers and not to forget those extra curricular activities i went on to study english at jadavpur university after which i joined the statesman as a sub editor in the 20 years since then i have worked for nearly all of the english newspapers in the city having lent my services 
to the Telegraph, Hindustan Times, and now Times of India, where I edit the front page. It's not a glamorous profession, but it pays for the coffee. Yours, Shubhayu. So, if you could please let the audience know of your views on this event. Hi, hi. Can, can all of you hear me? Sure, yes, sir. I can. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, firstly, wow, the quality of the debate was fantastic. Um, I when I used to do debates, I wasn't nearly half as good as all the speakers here. Um, and see, being a professional journalist myself, I obviously am a little biased towards. Um, you know, uh, a certain, uh, but I would, I would like to uh, think and I would, uh, I've tried to be, uh, you know, unbiased while marking, um, you know, um, I've marked purely on the basis of uh, each uh, argument. Um, and, um, you know, the, each of the debaters was like fantastic. I, I couldn't have, I couldn't have, I, I was, I was nowhere as good as this when I used to be it. Um, the quality of debate actually blew me away. I am thank you so much uh, to my old school for, you know, inviting me to uh, judge this. Uh, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for being here amidst us and sharing your valuable opinion. Thank you. I would like Aryan Manna to take over. Now it is time to draw the curtain on today's debate. This event which involved a grueling hour of preparation, perseverance, and hard work, followed by the successful execution of the views of each of the participants, comes to a successful end. Concluding today's event, I would first like to congratulate all the debaters for working as a team and making this debate successful. Winning is not as important as participating in any event. The fact that you have participated makes you a winner. Today, each of you was just amazing. All of you gave your best. Hope all, you, all of you had a truly enjoyable, interesting, exciting, and a learning experience today. I would like to thank all the participants for their active participation. We witnessed students expressing their impeccable ideas with confidence and zeal. We bear testimony to some beautiful moments when the debaters dazzled us with their creativity, their finis, and charisma. I hope that every participant takes back an essence of the spirit of Don Bosco with him or her. We will be meeting again in the closing ceremony for the declaration of the results, which will commence from 1 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you to the teachers and judges. For Thank, the you. Yes, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, the teachers and the judges for the wonderful event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.